Hello and welcome to the Invader Historical Foundation YouTube channel. I'm Jonathan Claiborne. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the developmental history of the Douglas Invader, but specifically as it relates to the canopies. When most people talk about the Invader canopies, they refer to them as either the flat top design and the clamshell or bubble top design. What many people miss is that there are actually three different canopy designs. The first canopy design, which I'm referring to as Generation 1, was a thick plated beast of a window. The pilot's side of the plane featured a shorter window that was completely bolted shut. The crew had to enter and exit through the longer window on the navigator's side. The navigator's side panel was also bolted to the fuselage, but the top panel of the navigator's cockpit pitched forward and opened up in the rear. Structurally, this is a very sturdy design. However, practically, it was terrible. This design type was outfitted on some of the production models, beginning with production block one, serial number 4139100. Some sources state that this first generation canopy was ended when production block 20 started with serial number 4139201. However, the photographic records show this to be incorrect. The Generation 1 canopy ended sometime during the middle of production block 15. The last plane that I have a picture of with the first generation canopy is 4139145. The next plane that shows the original canopy is 4139183, but it's wearing the second generation canopy, as was 4139186, 4139188. 4139189, 4139193, and 4139194. So this tells us that the second generation canopy was not a fluke and that it was introduced sometime during block 15 between serial numbers 4139145 and 4139183. The four invaders that were sent to the Pacific for combat evaluations were block five planes that had this first generation canopy. The crew of the third bomb group who flew the planes had some very negative things to say about the canopy and how much it restricted the view. As a model maker, this is one canopy design that I never see represented in kits. The flat top invader model kits all feature the second generation design. We know that the second generation design started in the middle of production block 15. What makes this design different from the first design canopies are that there are vast improvements to visibility. The engineers took the complaints of the pilots to heart and set about redesigning the canopies in such a way that they eliminated the heavy framing that blocked much of the view. The pilot's side still held a short window that was bolted shut, but the heavy framing was gone and the window was now a large single pane that curved at the top. The longer window on the navigator's side was completely redesigned. The large thick frames were gone, and the window was now a single rounded pane, just like on the pilot side. The side panel and the top panel became one solid piece, and the entire assembly hinged forward. I have seen some model makers attach this window where they have it opening up like the A20's canopy, but this is not correct. Two thin wires run through the center of the panel for extra stability. While this window did improve visibility, it was still not a great design. For one thing, the position of the engines as compared to the pilot made it very difficult to see craft around you or below you, which made formation flying very challenging. There was still also the problem of the only entrance into the cockpit being on the navigator's side. This meant the crew had to climb over to that side of the plane to even attempt to open the hatch, which was no easy feat if the plane was spinning. Additionally, because of the forward hinge design, the wind kept tremendous pressure on the window pane while the plane was in flight, making raising the hatch a nearly impossible feat at 250 plus miles per hour. Most of the invaders lost in combat with this type of cockpit did not have successful bailouts by the pilot or navigator. 
According to some sources, this style ended when the third generation was introduced, which was block 35 on the B models and block 30 on the C models. As you may have already guessed by now, this is not correct. On the C models, the third generation canopy was introduced right in the middle of production block 25. 432601 is the last C model with the second generation canopy, and 432602 was the first plane with the third generation canopy. On the B models, the third generation canopy was introduced sometime between serial numbers 4139343 and 4139359, which was right in the middle of production block 30. The third generation canopies were radically different than the other two versions. While the pilot side still had a smaller window, it was now open and hinged on the outboard edge of the fuselage. The navigator side now also completely hinged along the outboard edge. When viewed from the front, both pieces open and closed like a clamshell. The reason that the windows retained the same size as the earlier versions is because the construction jigs at the factories where the fuselages were made were already tooled to produce those size openings. Stopping production in order to introduce new tooling just to adjust the size of the openings would have been a very expensive endeavor. The third generation canopy was different in several other ways. These canopies could be completely jettisoned from the plane in an emergency, allowing escape to be an easier endeavor. The canopy was also no longer a flat top when viewed from the side profile. The pilot's seat was raised several inches and the canopy was pushed up to allow room for his head. This had the benefit of allowing the pilot to see a little bit over the engine nacelles, which improved formation flying, but it also removed the ability for the pilot to lock the upper turret forward for use in strafing attacks, as to do so would send bullets into the canopy where his head is now located. There have been some claims that none of the flat top canopies were ever converted to the third generation type, but that is definitively false. This plane, as one example, shown in Korea with the 13th Bomb Squadron, had her second generation canopy switched for a third generation canopy sometime during 1952. And all of these planes show a third generation canopy when they were not originally manufactured with one. Many of the flat top styles made their way to the civilian market because the US Air Force did not want to update canopies on planes in storage. Many of the civilians later updated the canopies themselves. The planes that remained in active US Air Force service were all subsequently upgraded during the early 1950s. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this look into the evolution of canopy designs on the Invader, until next time, Thanks for watching.